Hi, my name is Bill Kranz. I'm an irrigation specialist with the University of Nebraska located at the Haskell Ag Lab near Concord. This particular program that you're involved with was developed under a contract with Region 7 of the National EPA, uh, Environmental Protection Agency, and locally with the Nebraska Department of Environmental Quality. The program is separated into about 13 different sections uh, and we'll be discussing uh, the introduction part of that and to why this training program was developed uh, and how you can learn by uh, being a part of it. As we look at the state of Nebraska, Nebraska is a very unique state in, in that we have natural resources districts. As you look across the state of Nebraska, you can see the different colorations and the boundaries of the natural resources districts here that are aligned primarily with the watersheds of, of the state of Nebraska. These particular agencies are entrusted with groundwater management, both in terms of water quantity and water quality. Uh, and what the NRDs allows them to do is that they have both regulatory and taxing authority to support the programs that they develop. And the programs are developed to deal with these issues on a local basis. So each NRD can have slightly different ways of dealing with the same uh, subject. As part of the program that we're going to go through, the, the Irrigation Nitrogen Management Training Program, we're going to talk about these things in a little bit more general uh, way. And it's, it's important that you visit with your own natural resources district where your property is located to determine how some of these practices may be slightly different and the expectations different as well. As we look at the state of Nebraska then, we have the groundwater quality air sampling that was done by the Natural Resources District. And this particular map shows you areas where the, the nitrate concentration of the groundwater was, is particularly high in a broad section of the area. The, the more dense these dots that you see on this particular map, the more frequent the water samples that were analyzed uh, came back with nitrate contamination in them. So as we look forward to the, the future of this, uh, these are areas where uh, we are, are greatly concerned about the nitrate uh, concentration in the groundwater. Now, as we look at this on the long-term trend, starting back in 1994, uh, the water samples were, are, are, all the water samples that were collected are graphed on this particular graph. And you can see here that the trend is slightly upward if you put a trend line to it. Uh, some might say that the bars are towards the right-hand side of this graph. Uh, are somewhat uh, the same as what they were quite a while ago. Uh, but if you do the mathematics, the, the long-term trend is upward on this, this sort of thing. Now the real important thing is just from a drinking water perspective. And as we look at these sorts of things, uh, are the cities that are providing water to more people than just the individuals who live on a tract of land is where it becomes important. And so the safe drinking water standard that you see here uh, is a 10 part per million nitrate nitrogen in the, in the water. Uh, and this particular graph then shows shows you, if you look at where uh, the, um, the triangles are, uh, these are areas where the cities have already had to, to uh, make some adjustments or to treat the water that they supply with their domestic, or domestic and city water supplies. So what does it take to have good nitrogen management? As we look at this particular top topic, and I'm going to give you a little bit of a scenario of what we're going to go through in the overall training program. Uh, as we go forward. So first of all, we need to know how we're going to estimate how much nitrogen uh, to apply to a particular field for a particular crop, uh, that sort of thing. Um, we want to know when the nitrogen is used by the crop and we're going to cover that in this training program. When, the, uh, what environmental factors influence uh, the use of the nitrogen in the soil uh, and the fertilizer nitrogen by the growing crop. We're also going to talk about how the management of irrigation and nitrogen management go together to affect the overall potential for leaching of nitrogen down into the groundwater supply. So as we look at this, just to give you a view for what's going to, go, going to happen here, uh, in the first section we're going to talk about some of the, the, summarize the current practices. This is information that was received from the Nebraska uh, and natural resources districts and I'll give a summary on what the practices have been over the last 10 or 15 years. Then we're going to talk about how nitrogen is taken up by the plant uh, and, and as it goes through the growing season and in particular we're going to concentrate on on the corn crop as we go through this. We're also going to talk about how the application rate K 
can contribute to the nitrogen uh, leaching loss. And if you see this particular graph, we start over here on the, on the lower left and, and go up here. As we apply more and more nitrogen that you go across on the horizontal axis, you can see that the potential for nitrogen leaching uh, or residual soil nitrogen in, uh, that's there goes up. And these are the kinds of things that we're going to talk about, the, the specific points that you see on this particular graph, uh, point to what the potential yield response might be to a given level of nitrogen, and we're going to provide some details of that. We're also going to account for different nitrogen sources. And what you see on this particular uh, image is that we have, have the soil, it certainly has a big role to play. Uh, we're going to talk about fixation and, and different uh, ways of that going to happen. Uh, the commercial fertilizer that you might apply, uh, the tillage practices that we're going to put out there, uh, and also uh, the animal manures if we have those in our system. And again, I, the, the uh, crop residue here is another source of, of nitrogen fertilizer. We're going to talk about what happens to that nitrogen fertilizer during the course of the growing season uh, as it's converted from one form to another uh, and made available to the plant. And in the process, we're going to talk about how your production practices can impact uh, how much of that is actually used by the crop. We're also going to talk about how nitrate leaching occurs. With the movement of water through the profile, if we have nitrogen available, we're going to take some of that nitrogen uh, down through the profile and out the bottom of our, our root zone. We'll talk some about the application timing. When is the best time to put the, the fertilizer on? Uh, and also the methods that we're going to use to put that material on. Then we're going to talk a little bit about water management. Uh, where does the water go in, in our watersheds uh, as we apply water via irrigation or we get rainfall and, and surface runoff and all those kinds of things? So we're going to talk a little bit more in detail about that particular subject. We're also going to talk about, since sprinkler irrigation is one of the major ways that we're applying water with our irrigation systems in the state of Nebraska, we're going to talk some about uh, where this water goes uh, during the water application event and what we can do to potentially conserve some of that water for future use. We're going to talk about what the typical uh, nitrate concentrations are in leachate water leaving the soil profile under different means of applying water from sprinkler irrigation to surge furrow irrigation to standard traditional furrow irrigation types of systems. We're also going to share with you some information about the soil water monitoring equipment uh, that's available on the market, how you might use in this particular case the, the watermark soil water sensors to estimate how much water is out there in the soil profile for the crop to use and then determine whether an irrigation event is needed to supplement that water as the growing season goes on. We'll talk about management strategies in terms of how we're going to manage that water uh, that's available to that particular crop uh, as we go through the growing season. And certainly uh, as we grow our, our root zone, as you can see by the, the lines going up here, uh, our root zone is growing during the growing season. What we want to do is try to keep our soil water content uh, in this range of the green, which is the, is the kind of the go zone or the grow zone. And we want to stay out of uh, this, this red zone down below because that's going to affect our yield. Uh, and we really don't want to want to, uh, I'm sorry, this is the, uh, the stress zone for other, other things in terms of the water available to the crop. Um, and and uh, we're also going to leave some room for, for rainfall that we're going to see here uh, on the top. So to summarize this particular section of the introduction of this, uh, Nebraska groundwater is, is contaminated with nitrogen out there in the field in a lot of areas. And just because we don't have that particular issue right now in our general area doesn't mean it won't happen at some time in the future. Nonpoint sources represent the largest source of nitrogen that we find in our groundwater, which means that it comes from a large area and it's hard to pinpoint where it comes from. Our research indi indicates that uh, with improved management of both nitrogen and irrigation, we can limit the amount of nitrogen that moves through our profile and into the groundwater supply and have a positive impact on water quality in the long run. Our nitrogen management recommendations are including all sources of nitrogen that are available to the plant. And our recommendations that the University of Nebraska has put out there uh, takes into account how the nitrogen is transformed during the growing season, uh, how the method of application and timing can come into play. We're also going to have talked about uh, irrigation water management, how we can manage that, that uh, water during the growing season to minimize how much water passes through the root zone and out the bottom uh, and into the groundwater supply. 
Lastly, our soil water sensors are a key factor in terms of abil our ability to manage that water application in, in a way that's going to conserve water for the long run. And so water quantity comes into play here with this particular uh, production as well. This particular program was developed, uh, as I mentioned, with Region 7 uh, of the EPA uh, in, in uh, Kansas City, Missouri, uh, under our subcontract here uh, with the Nebraska Department of Environmental Quality. The materials that you're going to see as part of this program were developed uh, with the assistance and collaboration with the Nebraska Association of Resources Districts, uh, in particular uh, the, the Natural Resources Districts themselves, and uh, Nebraska Extension. 